Okay, so hello again. I was not supposed to speak this today, but I was asked by Carlo, or even asked, it was told that I will uh, uh, hold another speech. I'll try to make it as short as possible or as straightforward as possible. After all this art we've seen, I feel a little bit little with my stuff that I will present now, but I hope that you can pay it attention and see how you could bring your Ultimaker printer to the web, let's say to the web, that you will be able to print even from abroad. The problem is you have to get to, to get married if you're not yet, because you need someone at home that <laughs> removes the print after it printed successfully, because you, you will have to wait till you come home to remove it and go back to the next location and print the next piece. So I was in Austria the, some weeks ago and I had there, I had to do two workshops and the problem was I had to show the same on each of the workshops. So my wife really knew on three o'clock on this and this date she had to remove the piece of the printer. She was even helped by my little daughter. So they managed to do that. I trained them how to do that because it's not so easy, you know, to if, if it sticks really well to the print pad and also to glue the blue tape in parallel. That's not easy. So at this point, I will show you how to get, let's say, this all the hardware, the, the Raspberry uh, Pi and the webcam and this stuff to work like I presented it yesterday. The, the stuff I print or the, the piece I printed yesterday, the stretchy band, it was really not <laughs> made up, it was live, but if, if you don't believe me, we can reproduce it in here straight away. I'll, I think I'll, I won't do all the configuration part because it's kind of too long or too technical or it will change in one month's time and it will be completely uh, different. You have kind of a configuration. It's a, a little web server running on the Raspberry Pi uh, who takes a connection to the local Wi-Fi or even Ethernet uh, network and you can also connect to from wherever uh, of the world. This one uses some dynamical uh, DNS service that uh, enables me to port, uh, make the port forward at home to get the Ultimaker standing in my office at my home. So you can measure the temperature at your home at the moment, 23 degrees point nine it's telling us, maybe it's, it's correct, maybe not. This morning I set up the printer uh, back there one of the two Ultimakers. Uh, we have, <coughs> not to confuse you, but to let you know that we not only did that and just forgot what we did, we, all, we, we documented all the, the whole process. So it was the trainee that uh, actually did it, but I learned it from him how to do it. So that was the also really, for me, also really good to, to get to know how to do it. There is actually, there was a, a girl in Germany starting this project called Octoprint. It's a print server for, for uh, Ultimaker kind of printers. I think that it's, it's also compatible to other RepRap based uh, systems. You can ha have a look at the, the GitHub or the, even the, the website she's running. Uh, the link is on, on, on the GUI. I use Google Translator to translate it because it's all in German on our blog for the moment because of all the, the, the children and also the teacher not really fluent in English. So what you will have to do is first you have to get some, some uh, kind of buy some kind of hardware, that's the Raspberry Pi you need, then the S S an SD card. Could, you can buy SD cards that already run. The, the system that you need, the derived of, of Debian, uh, or you can download it and, and uh, move the, the image file to the SD card, then you can put the, it, the stuff up. You also need 
you need. You can add a, a webcam. It's a normal, let's say normal, it's a Logitech USB webcam that has an uh, MPEG encoding hardware based. Then you have a, a powered USB hub. It's important that it's powered because otherwise it won't work with all the devices attached to it. And in this box here uh, was a, the little Wi-Fi dongle that enables you not uh, being limited to an Ethernet environment. So basically you get these components and then from there on You have first, that's at the moment, it's, it's, it's like that, it's not really nice, but you have to <coughs> upgrade or alter your Marlin firmware on the Ultimaker because of uh, a limitation on, the, on the, the board rate. It's not working at full speed. The, the, the Python uh, library that she used is, is not working at full speed. So if you have pieces that are really complex and have little paths, then it can also not print smoothly because the communication is too slow. But these are so, some of the pitfalls that you encounter. I, I did upgrade the firmware on this one, hopefully, or as we saw, it print, prints also from SD card in parallel. Then you have, there was all put together, printed some, downloaded some enclosure from Thingiverse and printed it on the Ultimaker to fit in the Raspberry Pi. Then just booting up the Raspberry Pi, doing some basic configuration, logging in. Then if you want to connect to, an, to a, to a Wi-Fi environment, most time they have a password that you have to enter, they're not open. You can make the, the network open for time of the connection that it, it's, it's working without doing these configuration steps. But if you're in an environment like here, you have a password to enter, then most of the time I use a graphical uh, interface to to do this configuration, I think uh, people knowing better of, of the whole Linux or Debian environment could also do this by hand in, or on the command line, but we did that on the graphical user interface. That was also why I asked you, Carl, to, to uh, put the webcam there, but I'm afraid I think we will skip this step. It's, I, I think it's too... too uh, too, ba too basic. It's, it's, it has nothing to do with the web service itself. So I managed to, to enter this password and to start up the whole service. There is a lot of configuration as you can see, but it's also documented not only on our blog, but also on the GitHub page, on the page where you can download the source or the, the code. Some of the code for the, for the webcam you even have to compile yourself, but it's all with a make script. It's really straightforward. Uh, my trainee did it without, uh, without the help of me, so he's 17 and he managed to do that. He's, 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 uh, he's doing a stage and he's uh, studying computer science, not really at university, but on a lower level. You're also able to 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 the to to uh, configure some system commands that you can shut down it from remote or you can reboot it. Uh, sadly, not the Ultimaker itself, only the Raspberry, but. Sometimes it's enough if the connection is not working again, but you, you're still able to, to reboot it, uh, the connection between the Raspberry and the printer, I, I wanted to say, then sometimes they, they can reestablish the connection so you can uh, print again. All sorts of stuff, and, and also you could also assign a, a, a fixed IP address to, to, to the device. That's all network configuration. In the end, when you do all of this, you end up with a, with a remotely accessible printer. From now on, that's the, the local Wi-Fi that's running on. Also, my, my uh, notebook here is running on that. It's not, that's not really necessary, needed. You just have to access the port 80 through whatever network connection you have to it. 
uh, even Carlo or someone else could, could now start any print for, uh, accessing this IP address. In the newest version of the software, it will be kind of a, of a, of a system only limiting log in, locked in users to, to print or to change temperature or move, move the print head because it can be dangerous if someone knows or gets to know your, your, your URL or, or IP address and raises the temperature in your home printer that you, is, in my case, 700 kilometers from here up to 250 degrees and it stays like that for I don't know how long maybe dangerous but here you you see the temperature monitor in here it's uh, even hotter and than at home 27.8 degrees you can then control the printer through these controls so if you used to control printers some 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 uh, directions are inversed, so if I if I <coughs> I had to learn this first because if I press the button up on the sea level, actually the build platform will move down. I tried to do that; it's just not working, as you can. Uh, you were disabling the rotor before. I disabled when all. Stopped, when we stopped printing. Let's see if we can. You don't have to use the, the little box in front of it. I'll just go and, and, and quickly reboot. Quickly, I hope. Takes, even takes some time, but it was a system command that uh, actually should have been executed correctly. The advantage of the Raspberry Pi is that it has an, an HDMI uh, output, so you can uh, connect it to a, a, a monitor, a display, or even the beamer. Carlo was so nice to, to put a, a webcam in front of it, so you, you're seeing a little bit of uh, the reboot uh, the machine does just at the moment. Hopefully it will come up and maintain some of the IP address I already got to know. Let's say it should be up in a second. If you don't know the IP address of the device, it's possible if you have the access to, to, uh, to the management of the, of the local network, or even if you're allowed to use a port scanner to find the device, or even guessing the number, that's a little bit of, of a problem. Now I will reconnect to, to the device from here. It should be up. That's the first thing you do. And it's, if it says operational, it sh should be that the motors are working again. We try. Now it's working. <laughs> then yesterday you already saw that I uploaded some, some uh, G code file, the, this stretchy band. It was this one that got printed in the end. And for the presentation here, I, I prepared the rooster because I think it's not not bad to to uh, have him not angry but in a in mood that it will let us travel back to Switzerland uh, without uh, going the whole the whole uh, way. So I already uploaded the file. I could do that again, but I think you already saw that yesterday. That's not really a big issue. The, it's really also nice to have all these files on the little box. You move with the little box, attach it to another printer, and will be able to do prints. You can also, if you don't find it in the local network, you can do a direct uh, connection via Ethernet cable. That's why all these cables lie uh, in background there, and run a local DHCP server that it gets, the, you know, you, you get to know what address it has. So we'll, we will try to print this one. You have multiple, or you have two, two choices. First, you could, that's what I do now, you only load the file. That means that the file gets analyzed by whatever routines on the Raspberry Pi and gets prepared load it in memory, whatever. I don't really know what, what's happening be, be behind the scene there. You see just the percentage how, 
how long it will take us. I tried to resize the rooster, but I could not make it too tiny. Another, another, because of the rooster, he wouldn't let me. That's why you have to wait, but you can really breathe and relax a little bit and before the print will start. The other solution would have been that you load the file and straight away print it when it's ready. I, I've chosen the way to, to start the print afterwards by myself. What's also nice, you see it here, there are some estimations how much filament it will use and how long it will take. If a print finishes, then you also can see the real time it took, how long it printed, but I did not print this one, that's why you, you don't see it here. So I think we're ready to go. It's all loaded the file. It has that's I think also this number is amazing. When you see how many lines of G code there is needed to, to print such a, a rooster, that's you can go and print. Then you see already some lines are, ex uh, are, are read or are executed because of all the, also the heating is on lines in G-code. What the printer uh, does is heating up at the moment. Here you see the temperature. That's another time to wait a little bit. But uh, you could also reflect what you, you've all seen in these days. I think it was really a cool workshop. It's I also learned a lot, not only on the technical level, but really on the level what 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 you are all doing or what, where you come from, what's your profession, what's your, what you love, what you... And I think it's important to share what you, you can share. It, I, I can see that we not, cannot share all the stuff, but what we can share, I think it's important to share. The rooster won't eat it up all, don't, don't be afraid. I think heating takes some time, one or two minutes in total. That's, you cannot do it faster even through the web, it's not possible, you have to wait. But I think it's worth to wait. I, I've chosen to print at 210 degrees, I could have chosen printing on the lower temperature. You also can pause and cancel the print uh, if you want to, but I think it's not really useful. I can now go to some other view, the G-code view you already seen. The terminal view would also uh, report status how what G-code is, is, uh, is going from the, the, the rest or coming back. And I think I'll change to the, the webcam view because uh, being on the same network should be quite near real time to, to see how it prints. But see, thanks Carlo. That's the, the thing you also have to do. You, you, you can't print from 700 kilometers, but the nozzle has to be cleaned and the tape has to be, it's, it's not really all full automated, but you can see What's happening? I hope the level is okay. Yes. <laughs> Me? Yes. I only have a wife. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we're making up a good team, so. Thank you for cooperation. <laughs> but what's also provided in the G-code view while the printer is, is working, I'm sorry I don't have a mouse attached here, I don't really know how to zoom in in a... I already did. You can see the even exact the the, the lines that are sent to the printer. He prints it a little bit later because this is the view when it's, the code is sent. So it has to finish the, 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 the line before. Going back to the webcam view, it's a little bit also a 
the question of the lightning that or the light source you have. But it's there, it's printing the rooster, you see how many lines it already took, you see the, um, at what height the printer or the print pad is, how long it the print already took and an estimation of how long it will take. <coughs> but the problem is uh, on the estimation in the beginning is not really good or you all know or most of you know in the beginning the estimation is just a really rough estimation because of doing all the, the first off and extrapolating after more lines are executed, it's kind of closer to what it will take. The velocity is fixed or you can... What is fixed? Pardon me? The velocity. <laughs> the velocity? I think so, but I can have a look. I even did not try to, to, to alter the speed. No, I think the speed is not, it's not possible to change here. You can change the, the speed on the, on the printer itself, it will react to that, but I think it's not really useful to, to do that when you're printing from remote. But uh, you also have, and uh, the last possibility I will not show because it's, I can't do it after the print started. You, you will be able to do time lapse automatic time lapse of your prints if you put the camera in an angle that is really pointing to what the printer is doing this would not be too bad you would have to adjust the light that it's not reflecting this much so and yet in the end it takes a series of still pictures it puts it in one directory on the SD card and in the end it runs FFmpeg a tool that puts together all the images you can have a uh, configuration even higher resolution than what you see there. And in the end, you can upload these files to YouTube or wherever you like to. So, I don't know. That was kind of what I had. <laughs> Any questions? Questions? Yes, please. Uh, the the controls on the, the actual controls on the Ultimaker, you can you can change like you said the speed and everything. You can override what's uh, what's being sent from the uh, from the web. I think so. Should we should we check if it's yeah. really possible? Because all the time doing whatever stuff, I can't remember if uh, what what's really happening. So I increase the print speed to be 150 percent. And it starts to print faster. You can't really see it on the air. Uh, you can guess, but yeah, you have to listen carefully. Yeah. And I could also, I think I could also change the temperature, but not through the normal menu that you get when you print through the SD card, but through the temperature menu. You could also change the temperature of the no nozzle. If you go faster, maybe you want to also to to raise the temperature, so I raise the temperature by 10 degrees to 220 and we can have a look at the monitor here. It should also be visible. Yes, it is. Yeah, the target changed. The target changed. The target doesn't change, yes, here. I could also change the temperature here. You raise it to how much? 220. Ah, okay, okay. It's going up, but the target, ah, okay. I did not change it through these settings here. So it's not knowing, the web interface is not knowing that I changed it there. But it's going up, so still doing well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you are all invited to bring your objects for a small uh, art exhibit during okay. the coffee break. Uh, there will be um, sort of tags where you can write your name and the country. Uh, I'm, I'm finished. Uh, so please bring your objects there. Okay? Okay. Can you put your name and the country where you come from? Near to the old